Hello, creative friends. Welcome back. We are doing the Shaker Art Journal, and this is the color palette for this spread. These are Color Cube cards by Sarah Renee Clark, and they're really neat because they give you a color palette to draw inspiration from. And we are going to do something really fun today. We're going to start with some watercolors, and I did put a watercolor ground on here, which is gesso mixed with baking soda. And the baking soda helps the water absorb into the gesso rather than sit on top. So you get some actual watercolor effects instead of just, you know, puddles. So we are going to make a tree. And I'm just going to do two different colors of brown. Uh, normally with watercolors, you want to start light and go dark. Um, but I tend to work with acrylics a lot, and it was just a habit to start with the darker color and then try to put the lighter color on top. And honestly, it worked really well in this case, and I'm really pleased with the results. However, I don't recommend it for general watercolor paintings just because it's really hard to make things lighter and it's really a lot easier to make things darker when it comes to watercolors. So I've got my tree and it's all dry and it's really important to make sure the watercolor is dry before you add stuff over the top of it unless you want it to run. So I'm going to use some acrylic paints and do a background. Now typically when you do a painting, you start with the background first and then layer stuff on top of it. But in this case, I didn't want to put the acrylic paint in the background and then try to do the watercolor over top because it wouldn't absorb into the paper anymore. So, you know, I did the watercolor tree first and now we're going to go in with the background and, um, and do that with acrylic paint. So I did have to mix a couple different colors here to get the color on the card, but I got there in the end and I'm going to apply it with a baby wipe. Now I'm not going to try to go, you know, around tight around the tree. Uh, I just want to drop some color into the background and cover up some of this page in the back there. It was a page out of a yarn catalog and you really could see all of the, the words and the yarn and, and everything else, the photos back there. So I wanted to cover some of that up. Gesso is good, but it's not that good. I suppose it would be if you did enough layers of it, but I only did one layer. Now I'm coming in with a darker color. And I like mixing two different colors for the background because sometimes I like having a flat background, but most often I don't. I think it adds more interest to have more than one color. Plus there were two blues on the color card and it just worked out good. I'm being very careful not to use the baby wipe on any of the tree. Being watercolor, that will lift off and smear and smudge and I really wanted to make sure it stayed in place. You can see on the tree where the paint bloomed and created a really neat texture that's really reminiscent of bark. So I think watercolor is a really good medium for creating texture, visual texture anyway. I'm taking my Micron pen and just doing a very sketchy outline around the tree. I want this to be pretty loose and abstract. Um, I don't want to be realistic with any of this. And I wanted to make sure I stayed loose. So I didn't do a straight continuous line as the outline. I really tried to stay sketchy with it. My goal isn't to create something that looks like a picture. 
you know, like a photograph. Um, my goal is to create something that looks like it's art, like it's handmade. There's nothing wrong with photorealism, for sure. It's extremely admirable. The time and skill that it takes to do it is incredible, but it's not the look that I want to go for in my art. Now I've got the basic tree done. So I'm going to start with leaves and I decided to do all the leaves in yellow and having the blue sky in the background. It's a really neat contrast and I love the colors. It reminds me of a crisp fall day, which is my favorite time of the year. So again, I'm doing this really sketchy. I am not trying to make any specific leaf shapes. I'm just kind of scribbling. I want this very loose. And this is an acrylic marker. It's It says it's a an acrylic paint marker, but it kind of isn't, kind of isn't. Uh, acrylic paint markers generally have a barrel with liquid paint inside. You have to shake it. There's a ball bearing in there. These are more like kids markers. You don't have to shake it. It's, I'm assuming it's some kind of absorbent thing in the middle there that's got, that's like holding all the paint, but it's not liquid paint inside. I do like these markers. I like that I don't have to shake them. I like that they won't puddle. I don't have to prime them. They have a decent range of colors. So they're pretty good. So this is metallic paint and I'm going with gold because that's the closest I had to yellow. I want to use all different kinds of media to create these leaves. This paint is called Lumiere by Jacquard. Um, it's a light body metallic acrylic paint. It works really well on fabrics. I actually bought it for a fabric project. But I love this paint. It's very metallic, very shiny. And it's, you know, it spreads well. It's easy to work with. And it does work really well on fabric. It doesn't get stiff or crunchy and it stays on through a lot of washings. I'm making sure to dry this really well. I did put it on kind of thick in some places and I don't want to end up smearing it. So next I'm going to use uh, one of my gelatos, and these are iridescent gelatos, so they're a little bit shiny as well. Not nearly as shiny as the Lumiere paint, but they're, they're decent. I did have some question whether I was going to leave it as is or apply water to it. If you don't know what gelatos are, they're watercolor crayons. And when they go on, it looks like crayon. But then you can spread it around with water, just like watercolor paint. And I like the look of it as crayon, but I decided to smooth it out some. Just, I guess, for continuity. I don't know. I could have left it. Either way, it looks fine. I guess I just thought it looked a little too raw in its in the crayon state. And when you spread it with the water, it it does make it uh, look a little shinier. So I'm going to stamp some leaves. And I do happen to have yellow ink. And I've got this stamp, and I probably should have shown it. Um, it's, it's a fun leaf shape. It's not a realistic leaf shape. 
And I know you really can't see it on the video. It's kind of subtle, but I really like the effect because when you look at the finished product, the more you look, the more you see, and, and you can see all these leaf shapes in there. Doing all of these different things really adds depth and interest. I very much like using all kinds of different media in my work. And the idea of this tree came about because I wanted to use a whole bunch of different things and I thought, how is, how is this going to look if I do all these different things together? And I have to say I'm pretty pleased with it. Now here I'm doing a little bit of collage. This is scrapbook paper. Um, it's a, uh, like a batik kind of pattern. It's, you can't really see it too well on the video, but it's kind of marbled sort of. It doesn't look like much other than solid yellow, unfortunately. But I didn't have a lot of yellow scrapbook paper. Yellow and red, for some reason, I have a hard time finding in scrapbook paper. I have all kinds of, you know, neon colors and pastel colors and a lot of blues and browns, but for some reason I don't have reds and yellows. Unfortunately, I had to have a specific leaf shape with these. I couldn't be loose, like you can't cut out something in a loose way. But it does add some definition and it um, gives the illusion that these are closer up because there's more detail to them. So it kind of pushes all of that other mixed media stuff into the background um, with the ex exception of the stamps because the stamps are clear. But having some things looser and some things crisper and sharper uh, helps a lot to create the illusion of depth. I like to do trees and um, really I'm, in, I'm very inspired by nature and I use nature a lot in my work. Um, I use other things a lot less, but you go ahead and create whatever inspires you. There's all kinds of things out there to draw from. Some people love patterns, some people love buildings and architecture, some people love cars or tractors or animals or people. There's all kinds of things and whatever draws your interest, make art about that. Art's a reflection of you and what you like and what inspires you. Like, always make your own art. Don't try to make someone else's art. Even if you're taking a class or a workshop or learning a new technique and you have to kind of copy what someone else is doing to learn that technique, that's fine, but then take that technique and apply it to what you're interested in. Art is one of the few things in this world where you can be completely, totally, 100% yourself with. That also kind of makes it scary because every piece that you put out there and show someone, this is a representation of you and who you are. And if someone rejects that, it can be really painful. But you know, not everybody's gonna like you, not everyone's gonna like your stuff. And it's not a reflection of you, it's just an incompatibility. It's perfectly fine. I mean, 
you don't like everyone and everything either. For a long time, I was really scared of people not liking me. I was a major people pleaser. And I think a lot of us were unintentionally raised that way, or maybe intentionally raised that way. But um, art is a really good way to get over that. The most important thing is that you like your work and you like yourself. I've got this cute little bird from the bird book and uh, I moved him around a bit, but I really like him over here on this side because there's so many leaves on this side that it's a really nice contrast, the blue with the yellow. And I thought it made a lot more impact over here. So I've got him glued down and now we're gonna give him some little legs and feet so he's standing on the branch and not just kind of floating in space. And again, I'm not really thinking too hard about this. I just drew some lines in there. Does it look realistic? No, but it's good enough. You can tell their legs and feet. Anybody who sits there and criticizes, these aren't exactly right, really needs a hobby. So now I'm gonna stamp my words on here. And I decided to put the words, have faith. Um, because when I started this, spread I really wasn't sure what I was going to do and I kind of took a leap of faith in putting all these different media together in making the leaves really scribbly in even starting with the watercolor for the tree and starting with the dark color instead of the light color you know I took a lot of leaps of faith in this piece and I really am happy with the way it turned out I just absolutely love it and I thought, have faith is a really good phrase for this one. I do need to let go and just kind of trust myself a lot more often than I do. So this is a good reminder. Now with my stamps, um, I'm using an acrylic block for these stamps. And I figured out that instead of trying to stick the stamp onto the acrylic block, if I put the stamps on my desk and then stick the acrylic block on top of it, then they stick so much better. I would always have this problem where I would put the letters on the block and then I would turn it over to ink it and half the letters would fall off. I absolutely love the way that looks. I apologize for that noise in the background. That's my husband's computer. I really need to have him turn the volume down on days when I record stuff. So this is almost done. The last thing I'm going to do is add a little bit of definition around the bird with my Stabilo pencil. This wasn't strictly necessary. It does make him stand out from the leaves a little bit more. It doesn't really matter either way. It looked fine with him kind of blending into the tree, but it also looks fine with him standing out too. So this was an optional step but I'm happy with how it turned out. I do love this piece. It's so cheerful and sunny. I absolutely love the yellow leaves. It's getting me excited for fall. And that's the finished product. I love it, love it, love it. I hope it inspires you.
Thanks for coming along with me, and I will see you next time.